Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to episode two of the Pretty Good Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Our general nice podcast for just hanging out and relaxing. I'm Lucas, as always, joined by Craig Taylor and Matt Davis. And we got a special guest this time who was also featured on our recent Deadliest Warrior podcast. Daniel, your Xenu Games affiliate. Aw, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say, we literally just finished shooting Green Bray over Spetsnaz. It was exhausting. It was therapeutic. Just like a Lord. decade old, old wound was healed with the finishing of that podcast. Yeah. Dozens of lunch table conversations summed up into one. I feel really good. There was so <laughs> yeah. much said, but there was so much still unsaid. All right. <laughs> we do have one rule on this yes. podcast, and it's no deadliest warrior. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because it was a big milestone for us. I'm perfectly but, uh, willing to leave it at that. <laughs> that yeah. is the rule. No deadliest warrior podcast talk. <laughs> hey. I want to follow up on what I was doing last week, and I said that I was playing Far Cry. I think I was on New Dawn. I did Far Cry 5. I did Far Cry New Dawn, and this has like awakened a new part of me that the love hate relationship with the Far Cry games. I downloaded three and four, and I'm working through both of those right I'm, now. I'm really glad I get to be a part of this podcast now <laughs> because I'm like I feel like I was the only one in the friend group to ever play Far Cry Five. I am been four, four for that matter. <laughs> hey, I played yeah. four. But I, I played four. I did not like it. I played the one where uh, you collected diamonds and you were in Africa and you dug bullets out of your hand. <laughs> yeah, you the far, far Cry two. two. It's two, two. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Far Cry two. <laughs> far Cry two. Far Cry two is like the deadliest warrior of Far Cry games. See, yeah, I, I, but I'm gonna cut myself off there because there's no deadliest warrior <laughs> well, in this podcast. Yeah. I have a very distinct memory of Far Cry two. Well, two. One is getting height damage and then pulling a bullet out of your arm because of the height damage. <laughs> And then two, that was the like first time I experienced like custom maps. That's yeah. People would make mazes, and there was just one really tough maze, and we got to the end of it, and there was just like an image of a clown Do you, with a phone Ziggy, number. Ziggy, I name? called that number. Oh yeah. What <laughs> so <laughs> let me check. You can you can talk about it. I think I still have that number in my contacts. <laughs> Ziggy, <laughs> still have it in your contacts. I have Ziggy in How my contacts. How many years ago was that game? We're talking like twenty. Did I miss something here? Why does Dan have a real phone number for a video game? <laughs> so, no, no. The person made a custom map. It was a puzzle. If you finish the entire puzzle, you reach the end, and there's a phone number etched into the wall. Oh. And it said, call Ziggy. And you could call That's Ziggy. So weird. Do you guys remember helplines at all? Did I you guys ever use that? Did he answer? Oh, oh, oh shit. Did, you got to call on speaker. Did you answer? Or did he answer? Did I'm it? calling him now. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Speakerphone. Please, in the right time. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, Ziggy, is, Ziggy. Phone bill. Ziggy is inactive. <laughs> oh, That's really Ziggy, tragic. Ziggy moved. Ziggy, so, Ziggy had yeah. a downgrade to like Sprint or something. It's, I'm actually, I'm really glad you remember that though, because the uh, Far Cry 2 community, there was a lot of really cool custom maps. There were. The biggest custom map community was definitely the puzzles though. Yeah, and it was one of those things that you only experience in a game like that. Yeah. Like with the custom maps and stuff. I mean, similar to Halo 3. I was like, going to say, like, that's probably the biggest game with like custom maps, yeah. I think, was Halo 3. I feel like which I've I never made, played. <laughs> I feel like I've made some interesting maps in like Far Cry 5, even. But Can you make maps in that game? Yeah. yeah. I'm Dan, like new to the franchise, so, so this Dan, is eye opening. Dan, in the world of video game map making, is like fucking Jigsaw from the Saw <laughs> movies. Dan just like, so he invents shit and he's just like, oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> They'll hate this. I, this I, whole I, room is just trip mine. So I almost don't even want to mention it because the last map I made in Far Cry 5 was literally this like alpine. Uh, like mountainous area. It was completely snowstorm blizzard, but the object of the game was you have to get from point A to point B, but any point in between A and B, there could be just like an infinite amount of yetis <laughs> <laughs> that could just like pounce on you at any moment. So it was a cool map. You had to like, you had to scale your crev crevasses. You had to like climb the mountains. You had to use a little bit of map knowledge, but at any point you could be attacked by a Yeti. I fucking yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not to get too deep with like the game design stuff, but like that's what's so interesting about those games is like you have they give people like a sandbox, like, okay, make a team deathmatch map. Yeah. But people create 
puzzles and like in halo 3 like people found glitches like how you could morph items together yeah and the glitches became an integral part of the map making and like these, <laughs> yeah. it's like a super accessible way to design and think about like making a game yeah a lot of freedom but based entirely on the own player's discovery the one that i got way into was little big planet <laughs> center center frame on the camera wait where's here. the e-tool uh, oh, yeah. no deadliest warrior, warrior. No <laughs> deadliest no. warrior. The we one I got way into problems. was uh, Little Big Planet. I remember we used to, we had this little group that would hang out and we played Little Big Planet. It was uh, our friend RJ and like, Matt, I think you were there too. <laughs> I was not. I don't remember, honestly. Yeah. But I remember the day Little Big Planet 2 came out, we were all super hyped and we pre-ordered it and we like took the disc out and we filmed a YouTube video of us taking the disc and put it in the system. And then I uploaded it to YouTube called hot girls making it. <laughs> <laughs> so i wonder if it's still out there for starters i have no idea what account it was That's on funny but i hope that ruined some kids day <laughs> yeah. i can perfectly see that <laughs> what With was three million hits <laughs> yeah, it's like the number three, one trending three million hits a uh, hundred likes and 30k dislikes <laughs> yeah that's I wanna, like i want to say something real quick uh, on that note I remember I have a very very early internet memory of me trying to look up porn on YouTube, <laughs> and the video there was a video of this guy. He the thumbnail was like his hand supposed to be like made look like a vagina, and then like at the beginning of the video he had it here, and then he took it away and berated you for trying to watch porn. <laughs> I was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> I know, yeah. And as a kid, I'm like, oh man, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> what was the first thing you googled? Mine, I remember in the Google search bar. Can't remember. Mine was remember, boobs. Yeah. <laughs> it was the probably first, something really bad. I have like so that. much power. The, <laughs> the first thing I Could googled probably was like had to do with like video games, like San Andreas cheat codes right. or something. Well, I got a question for you. If you couldn't think of it, what was the first game that caught you feeling frisky? <laughs> for what me? was the first game that you googled? Like something. You can go first, but I actually have a story with this okay. one. Okay, I gotta take your mic, Luke. All right, here, I'm gonna pass the mic to uh, Brendan, the producer over here. All right. So I, I got a story with this one. So, yeah, okay, we're gonna put a pan over to Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> Brendan in the shot here. That's our camera, so, yeah. yep. what was it? Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation 1. There was this one enemy that was like. It's, it was this plant that had like a naked girl coming out of it, oh, yeah. and I swear you went to jerk off to a plant. It was it was a it naked was a lady fern. inside of a plant, and I swear if you looked, there was like this tiny pixel that you could swear was a nipple. Yeah, and I needed to see a high resolution of that sprite. So that is exactly what I remember. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow, that's specific. Wow. Brendan like was like, I've been waiting to talk about this my entire life. <laughs> He's been waiting. I've had that memory for so long. For I got years. mine. I got. Are we gonna? We're gonna go around the circle here. Yeah. Mine was Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> that's Lara fair, Croft. honestly. I mean, it's it's the big one. Everyone they, talked about it. All time Back in babe. my day, all time they had babe. triangles. Yeah. <laughs> all so, time, babe. Do you want to go? Yeah, mine is. A little babe Dan might be familiar with, Jessica from Dragon Quest VIII. That's fair. That got me feeling some type of way. <laughs> it activated something in me. If you know what she looks like, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Dragon Quest, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was there with you on the PS2 days. We were so. like... So I have to go with a Knights of the Old Republic. Bas <laughs> Bastila. Ba Bastila oh. Sean. Oh, yeah. Oh, ba Bastila Sean. Uh, <laughs> Very curvy, kind of looks like uh, Kate Beckinsale. What we can know I you say? Took off her clothes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, to I, the I, extent listen, you can in the game. I, I'm yeah. still, I'm still playing. Well, I guess you just can remove her armor. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, never yeah, mind. yeah. I thought it was a specific scene. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the, it's, it's relatively you can tame. you can like kiss Bastila, but it like fades to black, and then she comes out and she's like, "Oh, I'm a Jedi. I should be kissing <laughs> you." And you know, uh, twelve year old me was like. You just kissed an all time babe. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it was actually, uh, this is pretty relevant with the uh, recent remaster, but Mass Effect. I was just going to say yeah. that, yeah. So I was actually at GameStop with my dad trying to buy, buy the first Mass Effect when it came out. And it was rated M, so 
you know, as the guy was like, okay, glad you brought your parent, whatever. Yeah, I, I can guarantee and, for people, we'll talk about Dan's dad more. Like, oh, I'm, I'm sure. Not, throughout the years, <laughs> oh, my, there's we got no a story. Dan's we got a story you got to tell. There, there's we'll no way around. Dan's dad gives any fucks about I'll write their that being <laughs> uh, no, alien no. titties. So we were going to buy the game. It's rated M. So, you know, you need a parent with you. So he's like, oh, as long as there's not any nudity or anything like that. And the guy behind the counter was like, oh, well, actually. Yeah. What an <laughs> asshole. And, and you're yeah, like, pretty dude. Much. Cover my ass here. Yeah, so yeah. Even though the back it of the was box. like a mix of fuck you, but also you don't say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The uh, real quick before we get into Dan's dad, uh, which is a whole could be a whole Who, podcast. Who's your all-time babe, Dan? It, uh, on Mass Effect, is it the blue lady or is it the first lady you meet in the pink outfit? So wait, oh yeah, so. You just started playing it. Didn't I just you? started yeah. playing Mass Effect. This 1. is actually so. really uh, personal for you right now. Yeah. So, um, the first song. thing the first thing you see in Mass Effect, like when that game was coming out, it was actually a pretty big controversy that you could go to like a strip club with a sorry yes. on like the uh, bars and the table. So that's mainly what the guy was referring to mm-hmm. when we were buying the game in the first place. But also, you may remember that the sex scene when you get to your Ooh. climactic oh, I, point I in the story. It to that one. I better I better put more time into this game here. Mildly <laughs> It's in H D now. <laughs> mildly revealing at best, but I mean that gets you your M rating. I even remember like uh Fox News having a segment on this like in two thousand nine. Yeah. It is amazing like what constituted violence and like yeah se- like provocative in a sexual nature back Honestly, then and you you go you go on those games now and it's like fucking 2d pixels or whatever and it's like <laughs> you can't picture someone getting upset about the violence in san andreas yeah matt i'm genuinely curious um a lot of us have siblings i think you're the only are you the only child here i am an only like child the only, only child i think i am did yeah. your parents ever object to like rated r movies or m games not at all no yeah i uh, feel like because i'm the youngest I, of five i feel like my parents never had a problem because you know all my siblings are like 7 14 and like 16 no. years older than me my parents were all cool with it like here's the weird thing uh my parents you know on a scale of bad parent to good parent i'd rate them <laughs> as good parents <laughs> Your um, parents are awesome <laughs> yeah they're, they're pretty cool and they like my dad let they let me watch a lot of violence at a young age and i remember i f- i f- fucking like tricked my grandma into buying me gta (laughs) so there was the gta double pack of gta 3 and gta vice city and i went over to an older kid's house and i played these games and i was like it like opened my eyes to the world of video (laughs) games like before that it was like rayman legends on 64 you know and this game is cool i played that game remember seeing vice city as a kid being like this can't be fucking real i played (laughs) simpsons road rage and then they put in vice city and i was like they were they were like letting me play it. I'm like, this is the coolest game. Was it ever. Simpsons Hit and Run that you? Yeah, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't that game awesome? Yeah, it was. That needs like a remake. Yeah. So oh, I remember yeah. asking for my birthday for GTA, and freaking my grandmother, uh, shout out Bima, she's still kicking. <laughs> uh, she's Woo. she's doing good. I was texting Hang her. Hang in there. Shout I was actually the I was texting her earlier today. Uh, yes, yeah, it's now. She bought me oh, the. Sorry. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> this deadliest warrior talk has to go. <laughs> She bought me the double pack GTA 3 and GTA Vice City, and I'm pretty sure I was in fifth grade or whatever. And my parents were like cool with violence. They had a weird thing about nudity. I think it's just because I watched a lot of stuff with my parents. That's the limit, though. Because I was an only child and they didn't want to have to watch like awkward (laughs) sex scenes with me, which I totally get. Um, So it you know i just looked that i just put those movies yeah, in when they was, weren't home <laughs> that was honestly like that was the same limit i grew up with like yeah. gore violence perfectly fine but once you add titties <laughs> i yeah. had this weird thing because my like the next closest siblings i have are seven years older than me then beyond that is seven years older and so you know i lived in the same house with them and they're old enough to buy these games themselves and stuff so my parents yeah. really couldn't what are they going to be like? Oh, you got to go in a different room while they're playing you right. know, GTA. So I just kind of I grew up with it, and so like whenever I'd go over people's houses, and they'd be like, "Oh, my parents like only allow me to play teen games." And yeah. so, do you think it was weird? Do you think America, from what I've seen, like the United States is a little more conservative than like a lot of European countries mm-hmm. about nudity? My opinion: there is endless <clears throat> amounts of like 
free pornography at your fingertips. <laughs> and I don't necessarily think it's healthy for like a 12 year old to be seeing some of the stuff that's on. Sure. Let's, let's just yeah. call it the hub. But <laughs> Ready, can you get the simple crash going? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Get, let's just say the hub. Um, <laughs> thank you uh but as far as like the naked female body goes like uh, and i'm saying that from like a male heterosexual perspective as far as like a naked body goes like awesome i don't know if you, <laughs> you hit puberty you get curious about that stuff i kind of wish like someone had just been more like I don't know, just factually there. Yeah, just like, to, just to say, it, like, this is what hey. it is. This is what its function is. It's kind of like this veil of mystery gets put yeah. over it, and it creates this where you have to, you feel like you have to secretly look this up. Yeah, and you feel with the like, level of yeah. openness that we're coming into, that's what you're going to have to evolve into, or otherwise, like, it's going to be more it, harm. Honestly, if, can I, can I, uh, yeah, sure, we'll pass this over if to your, Brandon. If your kid's a teenager, just like, you want to pan the camera for him? Oh, man. yeah. If your kid's a teenager, like, just be like, hey, dude. Here's what a girl looks like naked. Like, Put the bread that's there. it. Like, I, yeah. I just remember that uh, my parents, they would always buy me books. And I'd get so many books. And I got this one science book that did anatomy. And Hell that's yeah. Where, where I learned all that stuff. So, like, when everybody was like, oh, I, I, I don't know what this is. I was like, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, there was, there was a girl on the bus to some field trip. So funny. She would, like, she drew me, like, she sent me a drawing. And she's like that's what a vagina looks like and i was like Bruh. damn yeah dude how about the concept of uh so i was an only child of course i was a boy i had no idea like what a girl looked like below the belt line you know for a really long time and i was like what does it look like you know and um I remember... I'm still wondering. It was like... <laughs> I was in high school. I may never know. I was in high school. Get home this weekend like, what? <laughs> it was like... I was in high school and I was dating a girl. And that is when I found out... Like, in a conversation with her, I found out that, like, girls do not pee out the same hole yeah. that yes. they get birth. <laughs> yes. I'm, uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, that's thank a Reddit you. classic. I, I friends yeah. who are girls, like, my mom told me that. Oh, no, my, uh, actually, that's not true. My mom told me that women pee out of their butts. <laughs> <laughs> and I believed nice. that until I was, like, 13 or 14. <laughs> there is this, it's it's seriously, though, it's, like, in America, if you're outside of America watching this, there is, like, this veil of, there's like, a secrecy. Yeah. yeah, there's this veil of secrecy that, like, you get like raised up to believe that you shouldn't know any of this i and i think it's the american like american health class system well like. i just want to say i think it's a lot to do with like our protestant origin yeah. like people coming over here and there was a certain segment of them that There's were extremely religious like you know if you yeah. had sex they freaking burned you alive or whatever yeah and i think a little bit of that excuse me obviously <laughs> first first burp cut into the podcast obviously <laughs> Obviously, it not the first, but the first like, hot. <laughs> what family you're in, but like, I think a little bit of that has carried over, and I just think like, man, when my kid, if I even a, if I have a son or a girl, like, when they hit puberty, I'm just gonna be like, listen, here's a magazine. This is what it looks like. You <laughs> do what you will with that, like, because it's be not, safe, be smart, but know the truth. Yeah, not it's like not. This it's not like subterfuge. Hard, it's not hardcore, like porn it's just there's like, definitely a difference yeah. yeah i think there is a difference because i think that can be damaging to a younger kid like seeing some of the stuff that is oh yeah i mean porn is like it's an industry made for like entertainment yeah. hooking you to like making you addicted yeah. and and presenting very specific I mean, you think stuff. about you think about the golden years that you should know about that information and that's exactly the years that i had no idea what the <laughs> yeah. fuck was going can on can i tell you i want to tell this is going to be the grand unveiling i don't think i've ever even told anyone my Ooh, a really embarrassing exclusive story cut pod class uh, pod <laughs> podcast <laughs> exclusive dan gun the camera zoom in on Lucas. yeah yeah hold on guys <laughs> oh, we can zoom in on post too no, no i, I don't know we're we're doing it live. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. I had an embarrassing moment. Look at that. <laughs> he's got he's got Greedo right over his shoulder there. I had an embarrassing moment where it's not that exciting. It's not worth it. Zoom. But uh, we uh, had like, go, go, put it back. Put it back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be the worst edited video. We had like a sex education class. It was either like fifth or sixth grade, and I misheard 
the word vagina. And for like two or three years, I thought it was a mudgina. <laughs> Until I got corrected one day when I said it in front of someone. <laughs> Magina sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> and they're like, dude, what's a Magina? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you were like, they're like, it's a vagina. You're like, that's what I said. <laughs> My girlfriend, if she's watching this, she's going to have a great time because she's heard this story and thinks it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it, that is a hilarious story. When I zoomed in on you, I did not know that was what I was going to be hearing. <laughs> yeah. But Yeah, so you mentioned in the last uh, Pretty Good podcast, you mentioned a gentleman named Dalton whose video <laughs> game you stole. And Dalton's getting another shout out on this podcast. I went to elementary school with said Dalton and... He, um, we're going to have to send this to him so he knows the success. I'm friends uh, with him on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, like I follow him on Snapchat and stuff, but Which, he... As in... Yes. Yeah, God okay. damn it. it was actually, <laughs> I was checking. We can, we can beat I was that. referencing a different... Oh, yeah. that's a different oh, one. It was referencing we a different We can edit dog. all this out. Yeah. Craig... I forget you saw any. Craig, put a gnaw here. Well, I, uh, edit, okay. I edit this one. Lucas, put a... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, said Dalton... Um, wrong, in shh, in third grade, they don't know that. In third grade, <laughs> uh, told us like, hey, I talked to my parents about what like a girl has, and it's called a pho china. <laughs> and so I'm not the only one. There it's was the American yeah, system. There was yeah. a few years, honestly. There was a few years where I thought it was like literally like the country China, like it was F A C H I N A. Like that's what I pictured in my mind, like pho china, and when i finally found that thing spelled out that bad boy spelled out in like a sixth grade book i was like oh my god <laughs> Dude, i was like I, dalton I, was on to it but he was wrong yeah. the original porn he was, was so close the original porn was going to the word vagina the dictionary and you're like oh my god there it is <laughs> <laughs> the dictionary was off so i'm gonna loop this back around whenever you you Darth were watching Sidious. you were watching a movie the with your parents and the sex scene came on oh i what i don't happen what they do oh my so god my, I, I i have a rule i don't watch any movie that's rated r with my family to this day i do not want to put in that situation that, so that's a good rule it is a very awkward situation to be put in when it would spring on me by surprise and it's funny because nowadays when i watch movies <laughs> if it happens i'm like yeah let's go why doesn't every movie do this i watch them now with but, my parents like it's nothing like it oh, doesn't matter so now nowadays the fuck out of so weird, like nowadays with my parents movie sex scenes are not like it's i'm not watching anything to super graphic or indie yeah. with my parents you know i'm not watching uh, antichrist with willem dafoe with my <laughs> parents where he's just uh piping out some girl or whatever but <laughs> if i saw like a rudimentary sex scene and we were watching with my parents my parents would make me cover my eyes that's exactly what i yeah, was gonna they, say they would always do like cover your eyes and I was like, that is such a stupid rule. Because, <laughs> of course, as a kid, your natural inclination, what is it? I don't know if this is true, but I heard a rumor that, like, in Germany, it's not a crime for trying to escape prison because, you know, German people are very logical and they're like, Nat yeah, they're very logical. Yeah, they're starting two world wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, Logic ruined. Not, they're like, Natalish, if you're in jail, you want to get out. Is that right? true, Brendan? Can we fact check that? I think that's exactly. true. It's not. Up. It's that not. It's not a crime to try and break out of yeah. jail in Germany, where it is in a lot of countries. But it's an extra crime in like the U.S. Yeah, but like, because they're like, I mean, if you're in there, you're going to try and break yeah. out. Obviously, <laughs> I think same thing. Like, is it a crime if your parents tell you to cover your eyes and you do like this stuff? Yeah, <laughs> you know, See, like you're peeking yeah, through. So I didn't get the covering my own eyes. My mom would physically cover my yeah, eyes. Yeah, so when I was like 10, 13. Yeah. I oh was, my God, this don't worry. Or I would have I was to, pretty, she would pause honestly, it and say, leave the room. I was pretty similar to Matt, where when I was growing up and there was a scene with some illicit you know subject matter yeah i like my dad or mom would go like oh it's the lovey-dovey scene i like close my eyes but now it's like maybe fast forward 10 years later it's like game of thrones where they're just completely slapping oh, ass yeah like, i don't brendan i know you, you gotta go but like game of thrones yeah my parents are like come watch us with us i'm like yeah um fuck no like i think the one time i watched it it was like oh boy it was, what it was a the scene 
where what's his face is fingering uh, oh, the Greyjoy on yeah. the horse, and I was like, all right, I'm heading out, mom. Dude, yeah. I could just so, think of like all the weird and action that scene movies is, with like Arnold Schwarzenegger, where it's like the sex scenes. So weird too, because that turns out to be his sister. And yeah, she, she like lets him do that, and you're like, just like, mom, I'm I'm leaving. Upgrading, I, I, upgrading weird. to Game of Thrones is just like, oh my god, how far we've come. Yeah, but Brendan, you maybe literally, say, my mom has a one up on all of your moms. Okay, because she. Told me to get out of the room, and all she had to do was just give me the look. Yeah, <laughs> and then I, I just fucking bolt. Yeah, this is thought, for your own good. That's all she had to do. Yeah. I, I just bolt. <laughs> she, she didn't even have to worry about that. Yeah, I have a Game of Thrones story I want to throw in here while we're on the topic. My girlfriend now of. Hey, you look right over his shoulder there. I was bragging about my Song of Ice and Fire collection. Yeah. I got Jon Snow's sword up there too. My girlfriend <laughs> now version. of many years. And hopefully many, 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 many more. Boring. <laughs> the first time we ever oh, hung out. I love my girlfriend. Oh. The first time we ever hung out, she wanted to watch Game of Thrones season one, and we did not know each other at all. And we yeah. sat on opposite ends of the couch as these people <laughs> were just like fucking on. Dude, screen. I was going to say season one has the most like, I want to say the most like, so it has the... I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, trigger warning, like a rape word, you know, like it has straight up rape scenes Intense. between like Cal Drogo and Daenerys. Yeah. yeah. And thank it, God she stayed with me yeah. after that awkward day. But man, <laughs> you're like, so you think this is kind of hot? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, me neither. <laughs> just a big muscular guy manhandling some poor little girl. Uh, and then uh, the second thing is it has that little finger scene where. Littlefinger's in the brothel and he's doing this like narrating. He's doing this boring dialogue about his past and everybody's like, oh, I hate Littlefinger. Fuck this guy. And so to make his past interesting on the show, they have like two uh, two of his prostitutes like have sex with each other. And he's like, unnecessary. he's like graphically teaching them like how to do this or whatever. And he's walking them so through it. So good. And <laughs> when he finishes his speech, like they time the girl climaxing or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, classic HBO. I was like, this is graphic. I was like, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. <laughs> Season like, one of that show on is TV? so intense. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's almost like they're like, we need something like different. Cause I not think, many shows have really done the, that before. I so, think it's worth mentioning that, when the season one of Game of Thrones came out, I was in maybe 10th, 11th grade of yeah. high school. I feel like it's, I did it's a, longer than people remember. Yeah, I did my book report oh, on the trust first me. book. I Game remember. Of, yeah, the North I, remembers. I did my book report on the first book of the Game of Thrones Song of Ice and, Ice and Fire series. Yeah. How do you explain that? When you read that book, how do you explain that to a bunch of high school kids? Yeah. I have to skirt uh, around I, so I, many I, plot I can, items. I can actually explain it. Um... So I've watched a lot of stuff about Game of Thrones. I'm a big fan of the book series, and by extension, you know, I, li I like most of the TV show except for the last couple seasons. And it definitely takes a decline after season four. The guys who were producing the show and HBO, HBO is out there. Look, guys, I'm going to give you... A little bit of a, a hit to the noggin here because some of you may be under the impression that you watch tv but you watch smart tv <laughs> you're like oh i watch breaking bad and young the, sheldon <laughs> yeah no not young sheldon <laughs> you have um, to be a genius to get it your grandma watches young sheldon because she thinks he's so quirky uh you might say, oh, I watch Breaking Bad, and I watch The Wire, and I watch The Leftovers, and that's smart TV, so I'm a smart guy. TV, the number one purpose of TV are not books. The number one purpose of TV is to entertain you and to keep you watching. HBO knows that, and that's why HBO has a minimum for every show. You got to show TNA, right? Sure. Tits, but tits and ass. And that's why <laughs> there's some sex in Game of Thrones, but there is like excessive sexual scenes and nudity in the tv show and it's to keep a general audience yeah. gross it's the same way in the sopranos and it's the same way in a lot of the big hbo like prestige television shows uh you know breaking bad maybe i shouldn't pick on it because that doesn't really have anything sexy in it um it has uh, some heavy topics though 
It does. It, That's not regular. Break, regular. Break, Breaking TV. Bad's a little different. Mad Men's got an all-time babe in it, Christina Hendricks. <laughs> That's off topic, but I just Ever wanted. I just wanted to drop Christina Hendricks. Give her an applause. Come on, applause. Give her applause. Give her applause. Not only does she deliver a great acting performance, but she is all-time babe. I, I've been using that phrase a lot. Uh, Amelia Clark, all-time babe. <laughs> uh, that's basically all I wanted to say. Like they they sex up Game of Thrones a lot because you know they're trying to prevent it to a general present it to a general audience, and it worked. Yep. Yeah, well, I, 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 would, I just want to say something real time. quick about Game of Thrones. I know you, you probably will start watching Game of Thrones season three, season two. Season four. Dan is the original Game of Thrones <laughs> fan. I have a vivid memory, 11th That's, grade. Yeah. He brings the first book of some dude sitting on a throne of swords. And I was like, Game of Thorns? Because I thought the throne was like made yeah. of thorns. And he's and like, it's Game of Thrones. That's that's what I'm saying, though. Like I had to do a book report on that book in 11th grade. People were not ready for that shit. Like, yeah. Just trying to do a plot snot. But also, I'm not also, talking. Dude, I'm not talking about you, like the illicit let me subjects. Let me tell you something, Dan. You're a smart guy. You weren't ready for that. Shit. Sure. Yeah. It, like I would Game agree of, with that. I, Song of Ice and Fire is so many layers deep. Yeah. Like, also, I guarantee the people that watched that were like, "Well, this is some weird guy reading some weird fantasy. Like, this is so embarrassing." <laughs> and then, like, ten years later, they're like, "Oh, I love this show. This yeah. show is so addicting." Yeah. Oh, they're they're like, "So my this OG, is a we- yeah. Yeah. OG starter plug. This is a weird guy reading some weird fantasy." Anyways, I wrote this uh, Chris Matthews book on. It's called. Uh, <laughs> It's called Play of the Day. It's about a baseball player who gets a home run hit, and it's like I just cool. <laughs> cool. I just glad think you're reading by, the, by the high what, intellectual. The couch. Yeah. The couch. I just the think couch. I think of people in that class at the same time reading like, oh, I'm reading the prescribed book of the season there. Like I'm reading Hunger Games or whatever. It's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reading Game of Thrones, and then you figure out what that means like two years later. I want to lead us into something a little bit different. Some of the stuff that we grew up watching is completely different than like what people grow up watching now. Yeah, I feel like our generation we're getting to like the next big generation gap. I feel what like generation are we? We're considered millennials, right? Yes, yeah, still. Yeah. So here's the problem: we're not Gen. One's Gen Z. Everybody part? here is mid nineties, and a lot of stuff. So we grew up being told that we were millennials. And now I see a bunch of shit that like mid nineties is Gen Z, and I re- I like I kind of up the official. I always thing. reject it because well, well dude, it's not like there's an official dictionary. Yeah, I feel like right, just exactly. assholes I always, talking. Google doesn't lie. <laughs> I always kind of reject it because I'm like, okay, but when I was growing up, I was subjective. not. I was yeah. not told that I'm Gen Z, but I also feel like there are two. I th- I felt like the best way I heard it put was on a podcast. Someone said. There are Simpson millennials and South Park millennials. That's and I was like, I like that. that is like the most perfect, concise way to put it. And I feel like we are South Park yeah. millennials. Probably. I typed in millennial years, and the first thing that comes up, what is the millennial age range? It says eighty-one to ninety-seven, which we all fall. That's well us. Yeah. Someone born nineteen eighty-two is a millennial. I feel like that's. It's pretty wide. No, 80s, it is, 80s very, actually yeah, count. Yeah, it's very accommodating. Because it's like 90s kids. Like the Mega 64 guys are all 80s babies, and they're like all millennials. I talked about this so, before with uh, Kelly's family, and it's just... Shout out Mega 64. Come on the pod. Shout out Kelly's hey, we family. Were, we were the guys at your show <laughs> in you. Philly, if you're watching and this. And we are going to be your guys at the show. Yeah, I me- so, messed that sense up. We are going to be the guys at your show in Pittsburgh. So. I would still consider us millennials, but the South Park Simpton split is probably the greatest I've heard so far. I thought that was perfect. I remember not being allowed to watch South Park. That was like the big one where like all my siblings were allowed to watch it. Yeah. That was like the do not. And, you know, of course, I stayed up because my mom went to bed at like yeah. 10. Yeah. And I just watched hey, it. Hey, here's a trade secret. We had DVR. My dad made a rule. You can record South Park. I got to watch it first. and Then you can watch it. Guys, I got home from school. I watched it. <laughs> I watched it before my dad watched it. And so on the now he was pretty cool. He didn't like restrict a lot of episodes, but on the couple he did, I saw those anyways. So you, your boy your boy had you tracks covered. There were okay? shows that we grew up on though, if you remember that like by today's standards would be almost like South Park. Do you remember Courage the Cowardly Dog? Yeah. How like fucked up that show was. 
<laughs> Courage is a fucking special treasure to my heart, though. I but love that yeah, show. There though. are episodes that I would say permanently scarred me, like Return the Slab. Yeah, oh I love God. King Ramsey's Return remember, the Slab. So, if, yeah. I, if I could say, oh, I have uh, up on that bookshelf, I have the Lovecraft collection. It's books split into different short stories, and I read one of them already, and I'm reading a second one, and Courage the Cowardly Dog gives me very much Lovecraft vibes, yeah. where it's just... Lovecraft it, for kids, if that was a fucking yes, thing. <laughs> yeah, it's just very creepy. Like, yeah. it's creepy and disturbing and... Surreal. I wonder you know, if we have courage, the same Lovecraft yeah, cur book. <laughs> courage is sort of... I'm reading the macabre, macabre Stories collection right now. Uh, I already read, like, the Call of Cthulhu one, because that's, yeah. like, his main... One and it's I a haven't collect gotten there yet. It's not just Call of Cthulhu, it's a bunch of stories. Yeah. So I imagine Macabre stories is like a bunch of Yeah, I it's took a, a collection. I took a trip to reading. Amsterdam like last year and I got a full Lovecraft collection. We we can't talk about everything Dan did there. But yeah. <laughs> but um what I wanted to say was the vibe of that really reminds me of Lovecraft because it's very just weird and ethereal yeah. and so you have like this blank protagonist that's sort of just going through and kind of going yeah. slowly insane <laughs> as he sees as he sees a lot of stuff that he's just like, what is happening? Back then, you kind of watched it like mindlessly, like, yeah. oh, this is a cartoon, blah, yeah. blah, blah, I'm a kid. If you watch it back now, it has this creepy overtone vibe and they switch i think what really gets like the the scary overtone is they switch animation styles constantly between like claymation 3d like rendering and the 2d that the show is and it really freaks you out <laughs> there are no limits to where they go in their writing too yeah sure we're gonna pass this over to brendan i think you're caught in the lap damn yeah. the computer i think uh one of the main what's up you want things yeah. that really attracted me to the genre of horror was a courage the cowardly dog and b metroid fusion Ooh, okay those because before i played that game and watched that show i hated horror i was just i was terrified of that but ever since i like absorbed those two things i just i just loved it you know metroid don't you play as a girl though <laughs> Girl Master Chief, yes. No. Shame. The pinnacle <laughs> sometimes. Samus. What was the pinnacle of horror other than do you guys remember playing PT for the first time? Oh yeah. How terrifying <laughs> is that game? And what's crazy, PlayStations, I have a PlayStation that has the game installed and you can no longer download it. It's been completely like erased from the store. I can't put it on my PlayStation 5. You can sell your PlayStation 4 for like thousands of dollars now with PT on it. Yeah, there's a piece a, a PS4 at a console arcade that we go to sometime. That's the only way I was able to play PT. I, I never was it. able to beat it, but I, yeah. I, I beat played, it a couple it's times. Interesting. And I, I played it at a sleepover for our senior trip. I was sleeping over at Lucas's <laughs> Is house. that old? And we, yeah, and we did a thing where we slept over. And uh, it might have been a different. I don't we know if it was we were senior. like, let's stay up the whole. It might have been the year after that we took another trip, but I. Either way, we were like, let's stay up all night. And you told me you were like, Matt. You gotta play PT. You gotta that's play the, PT. And me and RJ, shout the, out if you're watching RJ, <laughs> if you're listening. Uh, me and RJ played it in your like basement, in your parents' basement, and it was like it was the freakiest game. Isn't I remember going worst? into that going into that bathroom and seeing the fetus in the sink and being like, "Yeah, that was being the, like, uh, what the fuck did my friend like make me play right <laughs> yeah. now? Like, what is this? this that was is like so the Silent weird. Hill one, right? Yeah, it was Silent yeah. Hill is the canceled one that yeah. Hideo Kojima and Konami were supposed okay. to be on when that whole uh, the honestly whole thing went down. I think the only time I played that was in a fucking bar in Southside. Yeah, that's, that's the same. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you need to go back and play it now. Yeah. Like, I can yeah. bring it over. Maybe we can do like a let's play. Like yeah, retro, hey. PT, I like Halloween's that. in a few months. Yeah, it is, it is so creepy. I've tried to play it on my own a couple of times since I have it. Like every now and again, when she starts like breathing in your neck, and it's just it's the creepiest game. I wish yeah. that game was made so bad. Me and like everyone else, Folks, that game would have been so. Check good. out Green Dice Productions. Uh, <laughs> that's my personal channel maybe it's we can dice. maybe we can yeah. link it there's a playlist of me playing resident evil 7 for the first time i, I did this <laughs> i did this a few months ago and lucas has played it a million times he loves the resident evil games he's like yeah the, why, why don't you play this and we'll commentate <laughs> it and uh i gotta say it's it's a bit long because we didn't edit any of it but like 
it's got a lot of funny moments in it, especially like the if you can get to like episode three or four where I fight Marguerite, it's got some great <laughs> moments. Oh man, yeah, it's good. Maybe we'll, um, I've been debating we can make probably an abridged version of it. Maybe some of the best yeah. parts, cut it down a little bit because I mean it's like an eight hour playthrough. You guys, so, you guys Lucas, will enjoy. It. Just skip through it and like find find some good parts. So yeah. you're you're pretty into the horror genre. I am until I actually get the game in the system and I boot oh. it up. Oh, I'm, that's fair. I'm in. That's, I'm in, that's fair. I'm into horror. Yeah, I do. I'm into horror. I'm so into, I'm into horrors. Guys, did you guys cover? Are you gonna say? That's Resident why you like Evil Game 8? of Thrones? What? Yeah. Are you gonna say Resident Evil Eight? No, I was gonna okay. say. Did you guys cover the uh, remake coming for Dead Space? Yeah, we talked about it briefly last week. Dude. None of us were really big. Dead only, Space. only I'm so psyched. Yeah, only you and Mike played Dead Space. Oh my god, dude! I think I think I did, but and I don't have very it. strong memories. Stop it, Brandon! Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't be on his side. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh. Brandon does control the mixers. Yeah. That's a game that you can, can't rebel really against. It. It, it can really use a remake, I think. So let's go back then. Have you played Alien Isolation? No. Briefly, briefly, yes. Yeah. The one of the best Connect games. I will always, I will. <laughs> no, always, I'm serious. I will always brag. I beat that game on the hardest difficulty. It was the hardest. Give him, give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. That round of applause lasts like thirty seconds. So yeah, it was the hardest achievement I've ever worked for on the Xbox One. Yeah, that he did. That wait. game was too. Well, here's the thing with Alien <laughs> Isolation. So, oh, hang on. We'll get the video back up. We're good. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the deal. So, here's the thing with the connect. So sucks. No, hey, listen, hey, 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 I'm a connect defender. Okay. What do you do shut, with the connect? Shut the fuck up. Okay, listen. So, Alien Isolation had two different connect functions. The one that was kind of gimmicky. You could just lean your body, and your character would lean. But what was actually awesome, and was not taken advantage of by other games. It recorded your voice. So if you saw the alien and you yelled, it would hear you. And it would come find you, which added like, which I never used. Sounds yeah. like a bad feature. <laughs> yeah. No, it's an extra level of immersion because, like, if it's running past you, you can't be like, "Holy shit!" or it's gonna find you. So, is it, so is it amazingly immersive? Yes. Do you need that to beat <laughs> Alien Isolation on the a. hardest game mode? No. Well, but of course you don't need it. It makes it harder, but a. it makes it. You know, this is that a, is the last thing I wanted. A true gamer. Yeah, this I'm is, a true gamer, and I play. Yeah. I haven't beat it, but I play. If you beat it on. on the hardest difficulty with the Connect feature, mad respect. Yeah, this isn't a video game question; it's more of a psychology question. Um, I have recurring nightmares throughout the years <laughs> oh my God. of the Xenomorph. Does the Xenomorph ever appear in any of your nightmares? So I will say, nope. no, <laughs> not a pussy. No, so no. actually. I saw the first Alien movie as a very, very young child. We're Does talking he, like six. Do they appear in your nightmares, Dan? I, as, growing up as a kid, I was terrified of the face hugger. Not the Xenomorph specifically. Feel free to analyze my psychology in the comments. <laughs> why am I afraid of the Xenomorph specifically? Yeah. And so, why do I picture myself as a Colonial Marine fighting the Xenomorph? <laughs> Is it because I've played too much of AVP and Colonial Marines? Is maybe. the answer yes? <laughs> yes. Maybe, because, maybe. maybe because the xenomorph is phallic and you're secretly fighting your masculinity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it say about That's the, the face hugger for me? I'm looking for a personal criticism on, on Craig. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the hot seat for a minute. Okay. You said no. Do you guys ever that. have dinosaurs in your dreams? I don't yes. know what that is. I, <laughs> okay. I answer. died from a dinosaur in my dream. Yes, I do too sometimes. Hey, listen, fucking Rich Piana, rest his soul, told me that he doesn't, in his dreams, he doesn't get killed. He kills people. And that's <laughs> who I am. I'm a one percenter. I'm an alpha. I do, Camera on me. I'm an alpha so dreamer. I, I'm an alpha I, dreamer. <laughs> I do too sometimes, unless it's a xenomorph or a velociraptor. <laughs> For yeah. some reason, I guess that I have I'm died a lot in afraid. my dreams. Dreams are like the weirdest thing. They now, are. Now, Craig, my question for you. Do you, did you ever have any reoccurring dream that you can like recall? Yes. I oh my god. I have two. I, I have I'm, one. I'm fully lucid. I'm fucking shit up. I'm an alpha dreamer. Yeah. I'm, besides being an alpha dreamer, which we all know I am. Um <laughs> I like the Spartan and Deadliest Warrior too. I, I, I have a <laughs> I have a dream that I had as a kid before alpha. I moved to Plum. Where it's me and this and this person and there's like zombies or something. It's a very specific street where I used to live. It's playing Donkey Kong and then, in your hill, isn't yeah. it? Well, then I had that same dream again, and the person I recognized is somebody I went to school with that I didn't meet until after 
I had the dream and I've, I have a lot of deja vu moments. I, I'm on, I'm not like really religious or anything, but if I had to put my money on something, I feel like this is all one closed loop and you have dreams about stuff that's already happened. Cause we, it's all, when you die, it's just, you loop back. We it's could wild. get into some serious new age bullshit, but like, it's wild. I, I believe that dreams do have a deeper meaning than what we may think of as like a recharging period. Mm. Damn. I don't. It's, Serious shit. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I'm usually that's pretty fair. cynical, but like I think no, I, I I wasn't trying to be cynical. I was just saying I think dreams are they serve a lot of purpose. Scientists can't really pin down the meaning of dreams, like why we have them, because there's a lot of different factors. Like there's a theory that some of them are just random. And I think I've definitely had dreams that just seem like my brain is like I'm on drugs, basically. Yeah, and I'm I mean, like, that's it's like the weirdest phenomenon ever because right. you remember some of them, you don't. Some of them are running through scenarios that you never got to run through. And some people theorize like I'm breaking down multiple, multiple theories. Um, One of them, one theory is that like it's it's a way to mentally prepare yourself for stuff that hasn't happened. So if you have a fear of a certain kind of confrontation, like meeting a xenomorph, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, you, like, you might, you might yeah, walk through it and from an evolutionary standpoint. That's like a pretty good theory about dreams is that it's preparing you for what you could encounter in real it, life. It's like the Dragon Ball image training. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with that weird chemical in your brain. Uh, that release Joe Rogan's always on about DMT, right? Yeah. But it's kind of a meme in our group. But like dreams, they release that stuff. And if you go without sleep, like if you stay up for days and days, you'll start to hallucinate because this chemical will start to release in your brain. And so it's interesting to think about what is the purpose of that chemical? What's the purpose of having like, why does your body have that? The, the ability to like hallucinate things and uh, have such a vivid imagination. And I don't know what it, uh, my two recurring dreams that usually happen that have happened since I was like a kid, they don't happen every day, but I've just noticed they happen like throughout the years. Uh, maybe I'm giving too much away about myself on camera. I but, already said Magina, so you're yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. We can always uh, go back to that. <laughs> uh, the, I brought up, I kind of classify the xenomorph and the dinosaur ones together because it's the same kind of dream. Like, I'm usually, like, trying to get away from, like, a dangerous predator that I don't have a weapon from, right, uh, and, and hide. And the second kind of dream is I'm with someone I care about, and a nuke is about to go off. Have you died in and those dreams? The dream, so the dream always ends before I get eaten or before, like, I see the nuke go off and then the dream ends. Have you died? Like, have you experienced death in your dreams? I do in mine. I don't think so. No. I do in mine. And whenever I die in my dreams, it's happened multiple times. It's getting deep. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. getting deep, folks. Uh, this is not where I saw this I get going. a warm feeling that starts at my head and goes down to my toes. I can feel it in my body. And it's a, and then, uh, cause you know, there's that myth that you like, if you die in your dreams, you die in real life. I've died a million times Obviously in my dreams. Not. And then I, I get that warm feeling <laughs> and then I immediately wake up. And well, it's like this weird phenomenon. They say that happens with prey. They know to like, if they're about to get eaten, they like calm yeah. down, they release a chemical and you, you know, you just so say you die easier. I think um, that's wow. like based on a mental state though cuz I've heard a lot of stuff about like if you meditate inside of a lucid dream that kind of creates some you know weird phenomenon in your psyche. That's getting I, real I, deep. I, 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 that, not to get to lighten up a little bit. I do have a much less dark dream that I have a lot. I've had this a lot where I have I, a certain dream involving my wife that happens for Let me carry on. <laughs> I have a dream involving your mom, man. A, a dream. I would like to carry I have the on same dream. Saying, <laughs> uh, well, wait, wait, quick, I want to say the one dream I do have a lot that is recurring mm. is I wake up on Christmas, I get all these gifts, and it still happens, and I'm like, what are those that connect and yeah. you're sad? <laughs> <laughs> I get I get all these gifts and and then My I realize near the I realize I realize it's a dream and then like I'm still dreaming but I realize it is a dream when I have all these gifts and I want to take them but as soon as I realize it's a dream reality just starts crumbling and I wake up Mm. So it's sad. I'm like, no, take me back. <laughs> I had all the shit I wanted. I want yeah. my connects. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with a connect? God, where was the last podcast when you guys talked about Baldur's Gate and shit? 
Take me back to that. <laughs> All right. What do you want? What do so, you want? Uh, Baldur's, about Baldur's Gate, Gate. Dark Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about like dreams, deep meaning. Now. I want to talk about Baldur's Gate. It, Some things are bigger than video games. <laughs> yeah. In the comments. That's fair. Tell us a recurring dream you have, as long as it's not too embarrassing or creepy. Yeah, Caesar. Caesar. <laughs> yeah, Caesar. Your- if, if you had a dream about fooling around with your mom, you could just keep that to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Anything else is fair game. Well, we just lost our fan. <laughs> uh, Caesar's hanging in there. I want to loop back to. Caesar, if you have a dream about General Grievous, leave it in Let the comments. <laughs> just, just say, yeah. <laughs> I want to loop back to TV shows that we watched as kids because something big happened recently and everyone told me to stop referencing it all night. Drake and Josh was a big <laughs> TV oh, show when we were no. kids. Uh, cut it. Brandon, cut it off. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go home now. <laughs> uh, Drake Bell might be going to jail. <laughs> Sorry, what was his name? It was like Josiah. It, Jared it, Bell. It, Jared, Jared that's what was Josiah. Jared. Which what is for, it with the name Jared and... Yeah, and being a pedophile? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, if, if your name's Jared and you're not a pedophile, I want you to comment down shout below. Out, shout out to you. Holding down the Jared name. Yeah, thank you for holding down the Jared name because we need less pedophile Jareds. <laughs> now, Matt, there was a misunderstanding a while ago with you said the Dan's dad story, but I, w- I remember a different one. Do you remember Dan R? I'll give that. Yeah. At his house, you were at a sleepover. And there was a toilet seat. Yeah, that that's kind of an innocent story. I, I don't know. It's overlap. funny though. <laughs> yeah, I, we were just playing pranks on each other, and we had a can of Barbasol shaving cream. This to give you context, we were like young high school age, so we were probably like fourteen or fifteen. And I thought it would be really. I particularly thought it would be very funny if I put some shaving cream on like the toilet seat in the downstairs basement uh toilet which is where we all were and so someone would sit in it to take a shit <laughs> and they would sit in shaving cream and nobody took a shit that night the the next morning uh the host dad took a dump in that toilet and <laughs> sat down right in the shaving cream and uh he was pretty cool about it but <laughs> just kind of funny he talked uh dan this the Dan in question talked to me about it. he's like he was talking to all of us he's like yeah so my dad said he sat down in like shaving cream or something. Did, one you, did one of you guys do that and I was like you don't say I thought it would be funny like we were doing pranks the whole night where we were putting this stuff on paper towels and like if you weren't paying attention you'd come up behind someone and just get him in the face with it because it would just stick yeah, right. good fun it is yeah. it is good fun because it doesn't like irritate your face or your eyeball or whatever. So you hit someone with it and it just sticks there, and you never feel like a bigger fool than when you're talking about your favorite WWE diva <laughs> and you get just a face full of uh, shaving cream and you're like, "No, I like Paige." You're like, oh, "I mean, Candice Michelle is pretty." You're like, doesn't get any lower than like, that oh <laughs> darn <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> got on that topic i have a distinct memory of dan's birthday party had a nice casino theme this day unrelated yes. yeah I, it was i think it's when casino rail came out we so were casinos young. were in yeah and i have a distinct memory of a bunch of people hanging around at like 12 at mid- midnight which was the latest i probably ever stayed up <laughs> Chall- <laughs> and we were challenging each other to say fuck <laughs> <laughs> the most like seventh grade thing you can come like, up with <laughs> you won't say it i'm not scared to say it <laughs> like, no one was saying it and this kid was like fuck and we're like Oh, dude. <laughs> dude shit. This guy's hardcore. How do I one up that? Yeah. Something dumb like that. I remember on the school bus on the way to, it was like junior high or something. I used to bring the Bop at Extreme and we would play it in the back of the bus and the bus driver would get so pissed off. You could see like steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> He's just, you know, it's six in the morning. He's trying to do his job and you just hear, Bop it. Spin it. <laughs> Pull it. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude is just so. He's like, I'm banning boppets from my bus. <laughs> but the bus driver is running through every second of his life leading up to that moment. <laughs> Craig, do you remember on our school bus when the brief time we took it, there was just the kid that tried to like kick people? Do you remember that at the front seat of the bus? Maybe. Yeah. 
Is it coming back to you? Yeah, you, you, guys, just to like... you guys wrote in the front, nerds. Yeah, I know. Right? I wrote in the back. I wrote uh, in the back. I wrote he... in the back with the old kid. The <laughs> Literally kid. just try to squish you with his feet from like a seat over. The bus driver wouldn't do shit. <laughs> I don't remember. Granted, all the older kids were like my neighbors. So. <laughs> yeah, you knew everyone on your right, bus I ride. I knew every single one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys play HVZ at all? Do you remember that when that was big in our school? The humans versus oh, zombies. Yeah. yeah, I never got to yeah. play. I wasn't cool enough. No. I was invited to that every year. And for anyone who doesn't know, so the humans cool. versus zombies, everyone like who's cool from your school would sign up. Not and everybody I wasn't yeah. invited. Yeah. yeah I, I said know. only cool people. <laughs> and everyone who signed up Not would a- start as a human and one person would be a zombie. This would be like randomly chosen this one person was a zombie and what they had to do is they had to tag a human but you were in game 24 7 yeah so and the humans could defend themselves with a nerf gun or a pair of socks i believe i was so <laughs> excited for this socks game socks were the yeah. e-tool of the yeah. arsenal <laughs> <laughs> hey. i was so excited for this game and there was this fucking yeah. douchebag who rode my bus every year we played the first day of the game would start he would follow me off my bus and tag me the second. Because as soon as you stepped off the bus on the last day of school, I believe it started, you were free game. And he would tag me every single time to the point where I was just like, <clears throat> I'm actually not even, I'm like, you know, crying a little bit. I'm like, I'm not even playing the game this year. <laughs> you know, I, would get, I went on the account and like messaged the moderators. I was like, can you remove my account, please? <laughs> <laughs> I, all I wanted to do was play this game because people would go to like our local parks and everything. And there would be this big like zombie horde would be facing the zoom uh, human horde. And it yeah. looked like a blast. You know, they're shooting each other with Nerf guns. And, you know, it's like 500 people. Yeah. I just wanted to be a human. And and let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. You were in high school and you wanted a chance to talk to popular girls. I right? wanted to, you know, tag one of them and, you know, maybe they'd talk to me. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're like, if I tag the cheerleader girl, she'll be forced to say something to <laughs> it me. It was Left for Dead before Left for Dead was, yeah. you know, existed. I mean, I guess Left for Dead was around. What year did that even come out? 2010 i think if it makes you feel any better colleges still do that shitty game oh yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's big still do you guys remember left for dead nc state oh dude Pirates. i forgot about that game yeah no, they, you know what's up falls into the <laughs> is that is that valve that makes that they never make a third game everyone's waiting on half-life 3 well, back, everyone's back waiting for, on left for dead 3 back for blood might be my most anticipated game this year because i left for dead like Playing what was it, Scavenge that Left 4 Dead 2? That, like, mo- that was, that was like one, yeah. some of the funnest like competitive stuff. And then like the PvP. Yeah, yeah it was like <laughs> awesome. And so Back for Blood, like the fact that Yeah, there's a lot riding yeah. on that. The very Back for Blood is just unapologetically Left 4 Dead 3. Who's yeah. making like, yeah. that? Is that the same uh, company? Turtle Rock. Okay. So it's different like, company. It's, it's not Valve. No, Valve published it. It's like oh, the same they? people. Yeah. yeah, it's just not under Valve. It's, it's Left 4 like Dead 3 Dead without them being happy. We need to play that because back in the day, we all played that together. The Xenu crew, uh, we played that together on Xbox. And I remember we would do verses. And it's some of the fondest early memories of Xbox I have. Yeah. Oh, dude. Like, like, you didn't have to be really good at that game to enjoy yourself. Like, all you had to do, we, like, you can get killed over and over again. We had such a good time. I remember we developed strategies for certain maps. That hospital map that was, like, the first level. Based on UPMC Mercy, apparently. Is, Is it? it really? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's what's that called No thing? Mercy. Big claim the fame. Sh- hey. Shout out. Shout out to UPMC Mercy. Pits- that- <laughs> Pittsburgh, baby. Yeah, that is a local hospital in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think that's like they specialize in burns. We do have some of the best uh, <laughs> well, like, more care industry in the country. I mean, so a lot of our stuff. <laughs> I gets think based that's on true, that. though. A lot of healthcare. Stuff. I think well, Mercy's the a, burn ward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well they, they have might, a lot of different like specialization. I, I think we, my aunt actually worked I, like I don't specifically remember, with burns at Mercy. I want to say I don't remember the total strategy, but we had a strategy worked out in that hospital thing guys would not make it enemy teams would not make it to the last round like (laughs) we had a strategy worked out where you would get the tank and we would get the tank at a certain point and you could pin the people inside the elevator (laughs) and i remember i was the only player that like mained the boom the boomer so i would constantly like get him and the boomer back in my day (laughs) I i was just good at it like you know vomiting and getting all the zombies on people and you guys were good at the other stuff and someone would get the tank probably mike because he's built like a tank naturally i was a smoker or hunter was yeah. my good i was probably the, the hiding and like sneaking and up when we played the together we'd be, in, we'd be in game chat game chat talking shit you know, oh yeah i don't even like, needed to get the game chat aspect but the um what was i gonna say about left for dead that's something profound 
I don't remember what it was. Not anymore. Uh, about our strategy. <laughs> about the oh, tank. yeah, yeah, about the strategy. Yeah. At the, at the first level, when you go in that apartment building, yeah. remember you found that like crazy it the, glitch? It was a glitch. Where you yeah. would jump across, skip the entire level, yeah. and you would like <laughs> time it. Like, Leave it to You damn. had to use the uh, AC unit. You could just skip the entire fucking apartment building. Yeah, I want to bring this up now. Game. Leave it to Dan. Do you have a memorable glitch? Like, like a big time glitch? The number one I remember was Borderlands 1. I had this group that used to play after school. You don't say. And if you got Sledge's shotgun, which is one of the first people you face in Borderlands 1, is one of the first bosses, and you got a shotgun, and you went to the final level where you were on top of that mountain, and you one person would kneel down, you shoot the other person with Sledge's shotgun, it would like launch you off the mountain into the out of bound zone, and you could walk around. I don't know what it is about that glitch. It's just like the number one in my head that I remember. That's the only thing I've done in Borderlands. I never actually played it. It's just people invited me yeah. to the game, and I, I did couple. that glitch. I never played it again. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple. Uh, I guess I have a few. Um, I remember the one time I've ever cheated at a video game. I hope the federal authorities aren't watching. Um... <laughs> <laughs> One time I ever cheated, we went in a game with Sniper. Uh, I almost said Sniper Wolf. That's a character from Metal Gear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Night Wolf, right? And we went in on a Modern Warfare, or it's not Modern Warfare, but World at War Zombies. And he did a glitch where we could all get like level 10, 55 prestige or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. modded lobbies. Yeah. And we did that and it was some weird glitch. I swear to God, he just made something up and then typed a code in his computer. <laughs> no, he, that, was, he, that was some high level hacking. He, he, he was like, he was like, all right, you go prone in this corner and then everybody throws a grenade at one time. Yeah, that was not a simple glitch. I don't know how in the world that hacks it, but I'm pretty sure he just like had to hit the enter key and he just was making us yeah. do whatever. Glitching we wanted, was when but, we had one person hide under the sand yeah. and try to knife you as a so, mini game. I remember that glitch because it's the one time I ever cheated to get my like rank up in a game yeah i remember halo 2 had some top tier glitches and i remember specifically on what is the mission is it uh outskirts where you're going through new mombasa and halo outskirts 2? was riddled with glitches yeah where you could jump up and get the blind skull and then get the not Rex, even including the skull get the Rex yeah. sword and get the blunt and uh Get the uh, I, other skull where it's uh, you get the sniper or whatever. I'm pretty sure if you set your mind to it, you don't even have to yeah. set foot on the entire that, map. <laughs> that was really cool. And the third glitch I wanted to mention that was like, I, sticks out in my mind. I had one, but I like lost it because I was talking about those. Is other it the two. one in Modern Warfare 2 where you could go to that snowy map where you'd glide above the map? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? You'd like be running, yeah. you'd die, and it was some guy like standing a hundred feet above you <laughs> it wasn't that it was for like a 360 game though i'm trying maybe it'll come back to me here yeah. well there's there's two that i want to mention one is the world at war shino numa i've got it I uh it. shino numa glitch Just where like crouch yeah you would crouch in the corner and then throw grenades at yourself and you went if you went prone it would take you out of bounds you would get revived and you would be inside the the glitch and like it would get so late in rounds that like you couldn't like you couldn't have any more ammo left. You were dependent. Get, yeah, it was awesome. And yeah. that was back when we actually gave a shit about leaderboards and we compared yeah. it with our other friends from high school and we were like, oh, they, they got this. Oh, look, we got this now. I'm and pretty sure like, like back when five was like the main zombies map, like 90% of our friends just like glitched in the center of the map. Yeah, well, if the, we did it legitimately, anyone that was higher than us did it illegitimately. So that's that was, a, that's that was good, how it worked. That's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And then the other glitch, kind of thinking outside the box, you guys might not have thought of this, we, is what we called in high school the Asian Microsoft Point Scandal. Oh, and this I'm not is, sure if you even want to go over this right now. Okay, well, <laughs> I, well I listen, was, it was all above board. Any federal authorities listening, I was not a part of this. I'm going to yeah. like kind of go out of camera. <laughs> yeah, this is, well, listen, here we go. This is all above board. This is like taking your, your funds and put them in the Cayman Islands and so you don't have to pay taxes. It's, not, it's frowned upon, but it's all above board. So what happened was... Uh, we had a friend who was familiar with this site where you could not pay like ten dollars, and they didn't really speak super great English. But you pay ten dollars, and you would get a Microsoft so? Point account for <laughs> yeah. Come here. You would get a password and username for an Xbox account <laughs> that had like a hundred dollars of Microsoft points. I wonder if it had to do with like the conversion rate and how like 
you ten dollars USD was like more anyway. So you would give them ten dollars, and then they would put like the money on an account. You would take the account, download it, and your console would have the DRM for that. So anything that they bought, you would have. So I bought like. Hundreds of dollars of Rock Band DLC that I'll never get back because it belongs to this other account. And hey, that was that was awesome. In the NC State Pool College of Management, uh, we would call that arbitrage, uh, using a less valued currency to gain value. Albatross. I don't. I don't That's know. Why I I, I've, I've had a little too much stoli to actually give you the definition of arbitrage, but I think it's something like that. Before we wrap up tonight. How great was the revolution that hey, was like Guitar Hero and I Rock wanted, Band? No? I, hey, I remembered <laughs> my glitch, another. damn it. I remembered my glitch. All right, you get your glitch, then we're discussing Rock Band before we And then we we'll wrap, wrap it up. up. For any of the Knights of the Old Republic heads out there, I already mentioned Bastila Shan. Knights of the Old Republic 2, as you know, had to be rushed, was rushed to the finish line. <laughs> and... KOTOR 2, so KOTOR 2 has an unlimited level cap on it, and when you get to the higher levels, you can unlock, like, different gear, but with the amount of campaign you're given in the game, you can only get to a certain level. However, there's a couple glitches in the game that let you gain XP, like, infinitely, so you can keep upgrading your guy. One of them is in, uh, the easiest, I would say, is a glitch on Korriban, there are these enemy called the Hesis, where if you shuffle through a dead body to gain like whatever's on them, the Hesis attack you and you can kill them for X XP. There is one body in particular in the tomb on Korriban. You can Google it. It's a very well-known glitch where if you keep clicking on the body, it keeps it spawns three Hesis every time. I go to Korriban last because quite frankly, that's the only way to do it in KOTOR 2. So I went to Corban last. I was already a high level. You keep going. If you upgrade your Force Storm all the way, you can kill these things like instantly. I found that I could do it like click on the body like 13 times before my Xbox would start to freeze up. <laughs> so I would do it where I'd click it and do 13 Hisses, get them to pop up, and I'd spam Force Storm. I'd kill them, get the XP, and try to upgrade my... Uh, I think the highest I made it was I had the patience to do like maybe like 15 extra levels on what you could normally get. You may freak out. I don't know if this is bad or not, but I played KOTOR 2 like the day it came out. Is it bad that this is the first time I'm hearing about this glitch? It is. It is bad that it's the first time you're hearing about this glitch. Quite frankly, if you're going to mod in KOTOR 2 to get the items that you unlock at the later stage. Yeah. Just do computer and just mod your fucking character. Yeah. So it takes like a second and you can get Malik's armor. Trying to do it the way of the Hasis glitch on your Xbox is the least efficient That's way. That's so beneath me. Yeah, <laughs> it's the least efficient way. Not the way to do it. That's why I stopped after like doing 15 levels. I was like, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. <laughs> I I swear it did unlock a couple like armor sets that I would not. I've never gotten in any other play, any other like non glitched playthrough, but. Uh, I had to remark that that's the number one glitch yep. in my quick, opinion. Quick shout out to the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion duplication glitch. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe you forgot about <laughs> that. That was huge. What? And the paintbrush glitch to get oh, to the top. Wait, wait. I I'm sorry. I know we got to continue, but I got to tell you about my ultimate glitch experience. <laughs> Go for so it. So this is... This... Y'all are at work anyways. You want an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> so this is in Oblivion also. I played Oblivion pretty late in life. I was a late bloomer late boomer and the uh i did a lot of the side quests you know i got the wabajack which the wabajack is a cursed weapon what are they are they call cursed weapon like daedra yeah daedra, it was a daedra, daedra guard artifact effects, yeah. from shiogorath yeah and so you would shoot a random Thanks. object and it would transform yeah <laughs> and, and it would transform into something else so fast forward to the final battle where uh Mar marion's dagon yeah for yeah marion's dagon is He's in the Citadel stomping on all this stuff. He's this giant. You can't, you're not supposed to really kill him. He's just kind of there in the background. Yeah. And I'm like, what would happen if I wabjack this guy? So I do my little stick thing. Nothing really happens. I go into a, uh, a building or something and, you know, whatever. And I come back out 
and Mayron's Dagon is collapsed onto the ground, and uh, there's a little like A button that says "Search Mayron's Dagon." I still have the picture on my I, phone. Yeah, which I I'll actually, put in the edit. I remember. I have photographic evidence from Craig of this happening. Yeah, I remember this event happening. Honestly, yeah, yeah. And so I, I called Mike, who was on, you know. Uh, Green River Spetsnaz, just for reference, not talking about it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I called Mike and I was like, I just killed Mayroon's Dagon. And he's like, Well, you just you beat the game? I'm like, No, I just killed Mayroon's Dagon. It's asking me to search his body. On the ground. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, What the fuck are you talking about? And apparently it's a semi well known glitch. So yeah, yeah, I was going to say that became like a well known glitch after a while that you can kill him with the Wappa Jack. Yeah. And I was like, This. I felt awesome, and I was like, "I'm the greatest Oblivion player of all time." It is cool when you discover something like yeah. that, like I'm on the your own. man alive. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just had to say that story. That's one of my favorite I stories. I certainly had no idea what the fuck was going on. So yeah, I was like, "I damn, I killed my yeah. Yeah. Like, But I want to loop back to my damn question before we wrap up. <laughs> yeah. Go around the table here. We'll start with Dan. Dan, did you play Rock Band? Of course. Did you play Guitar Hero? Yeah. Which was better? Honestly, I have better memories from Rock Band. Yeah, me. Yeah. As a group. I mean, I, easy answer. I have to say Rock Band. I played, honestly, like neither when they came out. I, <laughs> yeah. played, I played maybe Rock Band a couple times at someone's party, but uh, sorry, I meant to say Guitar Hero a couple times at somebody's party. Rock Band, I just remember had all the instruments. Like, exactly. First, it was cool as shit. It was... It's a more we, social we, experience. We yeah. played it recently at your house. Wasn't that uh, fun? It was so much fun. Yeah. Guitar Hero is not bad, but again, Rock hey, Band. For anyone out there, everyone at this table can attest. My version, I cannot sing. My version of uh, Down With The Sickness by Disturbed, on point. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I. It's tough for me because I play these games pretty extensively. I can play on expert, okay? I know what the fuck I'm doing. So <laughs> yeah. these guys don't listen to them. This is the real <laughs> this is the real opinion. I think the breakdown goes like this. I love Guitar Hero 3. It was actually the first game I got for 360. So I think that's why I got good at it, is because it's the only game I had. And I love the way the game looks. Song selection's good. But if you look at rock band, not just having, you know, multiple instruments, a campaign where you literally make a band with your friends, but the support like in like the rock band store is like unmatched. Like Guitar Hero would come out with DLC packs of like three songs in this, like at the rock genre. Do you like these songs? Maybe, maybe not. There, there was such a huge library of rock band songs and they had like community songs too, which weren't as good, but like, I think they were like free most of the time. Um, and yeah, it, like a ton of songs. Like I remember playing like Timmy Lords of the Underworld, Lady Gaga, we got, <laughs> well, our one friend, Scott, Got us a Jimmy Buffett pack. Uh, it was like today's Tom Sawyer. He gets by on you. Today's yeah. Tom Sawyer. He gets high on you. I, I don't see <laughs> listen to the music that much before Rock Band. So Rock Band guitar introduced you to a lot of music like rock and stuff I wouldn't have otherwise listened to. And so many songs I hear, I'm like, oh, that's from Rock Band. That's from Guitar Hero. So yeah. I like them both, but I think given the support and like the uh, you know playing with your friends, Rock Band gets the edge. <laughs> Guitar Hero H came H out. Rock band. <laughs> Guitar Hero came out. And my brother in law Mark had disagree. But <laughs> my brother in law had the original Guitar Hero. And I remember this stupid quote that came out of my mouth when I played the first one. And I go, If you could play expert, I bet you could play a real guitar. <laughs> I said that. And then I bought the second one and you know, three came out and then uh it was actually a guy that left the company of Guitar Hero who made rock band. And then that came out and our friend Adam we used to have parties in his basement where we'd all come over and play rock band till like three in the morning on the the very first rock band. Man, it was such good memories. And I really got into those games and I would play them late into the night, even just by myself. I remember there was an embarrassing moment. I would constantly put a microphone in front of my face and I'd play the guitar and sing. And I was like, how can I one up this? And I duct taped a drumstick to my guitar <laughs> and I tried to play the bass with my feet and I was trying to play all four instruments at once, like sing, play guitar, bass with my feet and the drums. And I remember someone, it might have been my mom who walked in and it was like the most embarrassing moment. <laughs> of She's she like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but I mean... I, I, I Mom, have, I'm being cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, go away. You may not understand, but this is pretty impressive. <laughs> but yeah, Rock Band was a fantastic game. Um, we'll cover in the next podcast. I really want to get into PC gaming because I'm just 
getting into that. Lucas, but you bought my r- Guitar Hero drums, notes. didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, you bought for like, it was like a hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. It was a decent yes, chunk of change. I, that was so, I think my brother-in-law has them now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get reunited one day. We'll talk about PC gaming on the next podcast because I know we're getting a little bit over our time limit. Uh, I'm going to throw it out to anyone. Is there any last minute things you want to get in? And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Is there anyone wants to put in anything at the end here? I was going to go through my kind of topic about the U.S. prison system. Do we have time for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we'll cover that in five minutes. The I'm system out. of a down. <laughs> They're going to build a prison. <laughs> They're going to build a prison. Yeah, listen to that song. System <laughs> of a down. That's a, that's a deep song. You should listen to that. Yeah. Um, uh, I would just say I appreciate anyone for tuning in. I hope we made your day a little bit better. Uh, and I used to listen to podcasts at work all the time, I know. So if you're listening at work, keep on that grind. If you hate this job, fucking quit it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm glad we made your day a little bit better. Leave a like, subscribe for more. Watch the WWE Deadliest Warrior Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the floor is yours. You are the guest here. I want yeah. you to Anyone do something nice. Yeah. Yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what do you fucking got to say, Dan? Again, it was great coming on here for the Spetsnaz <laughs> Green Beret episode. Absolute honor. I cannot wait for Taliban IRA and any others that come up on the way, but I'll probably sit those out. Either Who's better, way. the Taliban or the IRA? <laughs> huh? Yeah, who do you agree with? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I, mean, yeah, right. I like Conor yeah. McGregor. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and well, gentlemen. Well, wait, wait. Do you want to plug your Twitch? Yeah, so Xenu Games is working on our uh, Twitch presence a little bit. We're going to try to get to more um, group-oriented content right now. Right now, our uh, main focus is RimWorld and Tarkov. But, <laughs> I mean, there's an audience there. It's a great time with me and my brother-in-law, but... We're going to get some more good content on the way. So until then, just stay with us. Yeah, and uh, check us out at (laughs) Xenu Games on Twitter. So it's at Xenu Games. And if you want to send us an email about any kind of question, uh, podcast question of the week is what is your favorite glitch? This is for the general pod. And your favorite dream. Right. And favorite (laughs) dream. I like that. Yeah. First time you jerked off. That is, (laughs) I don't want to get those. We covered a lot tonight. (laughs) Xenugames1 at gmail.com. What a shit. I don't want to (laughs) know. Z-E-N-U games at (laughs) gmail.com. Brendan. Don't forget the one after games. Brendan's been working so hard today. Brendan, you got anything to say? We'll, We'll slap it up on screen. You got any last minute? That's it. Dan got up for you to fucking <laughs> put your thumbs in the air. What do you want me to do? Suck his dick or something? No. Ba- All right, boys. I'm, I'm going to be dreaming about that tonight. I'm going to wrap this Baby up. Baby Yoda. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. This has been the Pretty Good Podcast. We got the Deadliest Warrior Podcast. We got Green Beret versus Spetsnaz. That's going up probably around the same time as this. We got some gameplay videos going up. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for everyone who's been commenting. Give us some more comments. Engage a little bit with us. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching and listening. Thank you.